so let's start after short lunch break and our next speaker is again Luca. Oh, thank you. Uh, so uh, you you could already see me uh, one uh, or two presentation uh, before. Uh, my name is uh, Lukáš Fritsch. Uh, I work for Red Hat uh, as a uh, Richways core developer in uh, JBoss middleware uh, section. And today I will uh, I will present you about uh, JSF22, uh, which I expect you are familiar with. Uh, and uh, I will also talk about uh, the future of uh, Richways's uh, uh, project uh, in its uh, five uh, in in it, in its version five. So let's uh, let's uh, uh, go straight uh, and dive into uh, what uh, JSF two two can offer us in its uh, JSF uh, in, in its in its version two point two. Uh, there are uh, several big features uh, which uh, which are waiting for us or which uh, which we can leverage today. For example, with uh, Vadfly 8 uh, application server, and uh, those features uh, are pretty cool uh, and long awaited features. Uh, they were uh, requested uh, from from community several times, and so uh, just stri strikes again. Uh, so this is their list, and we will dive into those features uh, one by one now. HTML5 is here, and it's uh, 2014, and uh, JSF uh, get a pretty new, uh, pretty new friend, and it's uh, it's HTML5 friendly markup. Uh, if you already seen JSF. Uh, you may know that this is actually JSF, JSF page, JSF markup, uh, XHTML page. No, it isn't. No, no, it's it is it's it's JSF page uh, really. Uh, it's a uh, it's uh, XHTML. Uh, it's it's a valid document, so it can be JSF uh, JSF document. Um, you can uh, you can use it uh, as you want. Uh, here you you import some some style sheets uh, scripts. It, it doesn't matter. It's not JSF way, but uh, but you can you can obviously uh, do that. But if you would write uh, uh, JSF, uh, you would use some some templating engine. Uh, the JSF 2.0 came with facelets. Uh, facelets uh, are are quite awesome. Even the engineers who, who doesn't like uh, JSF uh, uh, leverages uh, facelets or, or praise uh, facelets uh, because uh, they are uh, quite uh, quite powerful and templating uh, uh, engine. So here uh, we have the same code, uh, but uh, all, all the function, uh, all the all the boilerplate around this this one uh, contentful. Uh, Line uh, is actually encapsulated in default page in a, in a template. And but traditional JSF are rather uh, components like so. Uh, JSF actually took a took a way that uh, they uh, they have namespace elements. They have several namespace, and each uh, component library can come with uh, its uh, its uh, own to define a set of. Uh, uh, components in a standard way, so it's a traditional JSF. Uh, but now, a uh, lot of people, a uh, lot, lot of people were complaining that uh, that uh, you can't actually leverage the new attributes which uh, came with HTML5. Uh, for example, placeholder. Uh, so there was there were some uh, some workarounds like uh, using uh, Richways placeholder component. Uh, uh, but uh, in general, uh, in general, this is much uh, much better approach. Basically, uh, pass through attributes allows you to use uh, 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 namespace for uh, for any attribute you you want, and uh, this uh, this attribute won't be interpreted; it will be just passed through as it is. And a quite opposite uh, approach is actually using uh, pass-through elements. As you can see, pass-through elements are just HTML elements. 
and you are using this uh, J namespace, uh, uh, which uh, or, or uh, somewhere you will find JSF uh, colon. Uh, but basically, you can you can use whatever uh, whatever namespace you want. Uh, sorry, uh, whatever prefix you want. Uh, and we are uh, using here uh, J J prefix to uh, define. Uh, the uh, the value binding uh, the value binding for input uh, input element and uh, what uh, JSF does here JSF uh, when it starts to parse facelet uh, file uh, which is XHTML it uh, goes through whole whole document and uh, it uh, looks for elements which have special uh, or which uses the JSF uh, JSF pass through elements namespace and uh, if they uh, find uh, such uh, such element, uh, they will uh, they will ec enhance this uh, this element and uh, uh, they will make it a component. So basically, from uh, from this markup, it reads that it's an input element. Uh, it has Thai text, so it will be H input text as seen as seen here. So this is the equivalent code for for the Previous one, uh, sorry, it, it, it isn't because uh, we are not using placeholder. Uh, yeah, it's on the it's, it's on, on the next slide. Uh, so the similar for uh, password uh, from this uh, input uh, type submit uh, the h uh, h uh, command button will be uh, will be created with this action. So it's. It's pretty cool. You can use just HTML markup as it is designed by by a designer, by some uh, graphic people, and uh, you can just apply. You can just apply your. Uh, you can just apply the binding to uh, to JSF, and it will be automatically uh, enhanced uh, by JSF runtime. Uh, so if we comp compare those two principles. Uh, here we define placeholder, and uh, in this case, the input is passed through as it is, but it's it's uh, it's uh, using the renderer. Uh, sorry, here should be J value, obviously. Uh, so uh, it's enhanced by uh, JSF uh, JSF renderer. One more thing about uh, this. Uh, uh, this principle uh, is that you can actually enhance any, any element, any future element. Uh, for example, here we enhance uh, diff, and we gave it ID. Uh, so we can reference this ID in the render section of the Ajax. Uh, or here we enhance span, uh, and uh, now we have uh, conditional span. So if we have uh, J we have uh, at the, at the uh, beginning we have click here to increment uh, and once the count is uh, uh, more than uh, more than zero then we print uh, the, the count to, uh, to the page so uh, it works with any element I have actually used it with uh, table rows uh, so you can have, you can have uh, conditional rows uh, you, you can have uh, anything what JSF does uh, JSF introduced new uh, component, which is something like placeholder. I don't re remember its name, but it's kind of placeholder component, which uh, which is used for uh, uh, text, which doesn't have any mapping, like like input text have mapping to input uh, input in input text, obviously. Uh, however, diff doesn't doesn't have any uh, or span. Uh, they didn't have. Uh, they don't have any. Uh, any mapping, so uh, the generic renderer, uh, uh, generic component uh, will be used for them, and this component have few attributes such as ID or render it uh, or binding. So, in a nutshell, uh, this markup was inspired by Wicket. So, uh, who is familiar with uh, Wicket uh, uh, and, uh, and likes it? Uh, he will be happy uh, about about his future. Uh, and uh, one uh, caveat is that you need to write uh, XHTML. So, for example, if you have some uh, generator of uh, HTML5 uh, markup uh, markups, uh, then 
uh, you will need to convert this to proper XHTML, which means uh, it's more strict than, uh, than uh, vanilla HTML5. Uh, Pass-through elements are limited to just known uh, known components. Uh, the list is uh, on in, in the Oracle Oracle documentation for Java EE7. I wanted to uh, I wanted to link it here, but I didn't. So I will make sure in hand of uh, there will be link. Uh, and uh, the the great way is you can uh, the, the the great thing is that you can achieve. Uh, some new things on a, on a web like like uh, Bootstrap uh, library can be uh, can be used pretty uh, pretty easily, or even uh, web components can be used with uh, JSF uh, uh, right right here right now. And uh, this is about HTML friendly. Uh, and let's. Uh, Look into another cool feature, which was long awaited, and it's uh, stateless views. Uh, for introduction, uh, let me let me say something about uh, uh, what are typical ty typical uh, states, which you, uh, st state concepts in a JSF uh, uh, application. So at first, you have component tree, which uh, which uh, uh, is uh, very JSF, uh, which, which is thing uh, uh, natural to, to JSF, and uh, then you have model tire state, which can be saved, uh, which can be stored on the server, and uh, then you have uh, persistence tire state. And who, what can JSF do for you is actually fixing the component tree, because as you may know, JSF doesn't care about the other, because uh, those are in uh, those are driven by other specification, but more importantly, they need to be uh, defined by uh, by you. So, uh, but how you should make your views stateless? It's very simple. You should you you just uh, annotate uh, your view with attribute uh, transient true. That's it. And what specification in JSF 2.2 changed was that uh, it specified how should, uh, because uh, any component pre-JSF 2.2 could be uh, transient. And uh, it, it meant that, uh, that the state of the, or the component itself won't, uh, won't participate in state saving. It means it won't state it, it won't store its uh, uh, state uh, after uh, end of the request. But uh, the specification now makes sure that when you annotate the UI view root uh, component with uh, with uh, uh, with uh, two, uh, the state will, will be actually thrown away. It, it won't be processed anyhow. So there will be no processing, uh, no no processing uh, regarding the uh, state saving. It means uh, the build is uh, the the view is built uh, on the start of the request and it's thrown away at the end of the uh, request. Uh, that's it. Uh, one another small change is that uh, instead of view state, uh, which you may be f familiar with that, uh, here uh, should be some uh, generated value, but uh, in a, for stateless view, uh, here is just stateless as a mark of uh, uh, the, the form which is, which is coming from stateless view. And uh, yeah, let's talk about it later. Uh, but let me let me also tell a few things about about uh, stateless applications because uh, from the from the uh, discussions uh, uh, I I got perception that people think that stateless will just save their their asses. Uh, it's like my magic wand, like make the view stateless and it will it will be uh, scalable and performant. Uh, unfortunately, it isn't this way. Uh, stateless doesn't in any mean mean uh, performant, uh, but stateless can lead to sc uh, good scalability. Can lead. It's 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 important. 
So if your application is designed poorly, it doesn't have to be uh, performant and it doesn't have to scale. Uh, what was uh, considered by by people in improving the, the JSF uh, rendering is also uh, using some more advanced uh, things uh, like uh, pulling the uh, the view. Like when the view is once constructed, you can you can re reuse it. You know you can you can uh, you can uh, uh, trash the state uh, which the view had, and uh, you can reuse it in uh, another uh, in. Uh, uh, for another request uh, to, to uh, the request to the same page. However, uh, uh, people behind the implementation uh, of, uh, of GSF uh, said that uh, the construction itself is pretty cheap step. In, a, in practice, it's cheap step. Uh, but yeah, that, that's, that's what uh, what uh, led to the decision that uh, uh, view view, pop, uh, view pooling uh, isn't uh, isn't uh, uh, built in into into JSF uh, specification? And uh, another thing is that uh, we could make the uh, tree traversal uh, traversal like rendering a view. Uh, we could uh, make it parallel, uh, but uh, you know it won't help you the 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 best use case you you have. Uh, and it's uh, supporting your application for uh, multiple uh, multiple users. But uh, good news is the JSF is pretty extendable. Uh, we in Richface is actually extended in uh, several uh, several ways uh, using uh, factories and wrappers. Uh, so it means that you can uh, both of those uh, things can be implemented by you if if you have this desire. You have implemented some some. Uh, yeah, some application that you you want to make uh, make uh, uh, faster, and uh, at the end, let me let me um, let me talk about uh, some implications. What uh, what uh, came to what came from the fact that uh, the view is stateless. Uh, the view scope the beans degrades just to request code because the view scope bean uh, is uh, stored in the uh, view which isn't stored anywhere after the request. And session scope when you use session scope, you are actively uh, creating uh, HTTP. Uh, not sorry, yeah, HTTP session, and it means that uh, there is a state to maintain, which uh, which means that uh, your your application is stateless. And also, there is security concern that uh, stateless views doesn't have uh, doesn't have uh, the view ID here. So uh, it uh, it means uh, there is a little bit worse uh, protection against uh, cross site uh, sorry uh, cross site request forgery. Uh, however, uh, the good uh, the good thing on JSF is that it it tries to prevent. Uh, uh, prevent uh, cross-site scripting uh, uh, using uh, using uh, when you are leveraging the H output text, uh, uh, then uh, your uh, your uh, the values which comes from uh, potential uh, malicious uh, um, or, or attackers uh, to your application, uh, they will be automatically escaped because uh, H output text. Uh, default value for escaping is true. So the, any any HTML code which is uh, which is uh, there will be will be escaped. It means uh, no script can be by default uh, rendered to JSF page. Okay. So that was security concern with stateless uh, views, uh, and uh, now. Uh, the last thing, uh, uh, last uh, two big additions to JSF 2.2 uh, uh, is uh, addition of modularity and multi-tenancy. I would say it's rather a specification of what was already in, uh, in uh, uh, frameworks like uh, Spring uh, Webflow. And uh, that's why it was uh, it was specified and uh, it was implemented in in uh, JSF. So this is just what is modularity. 
uh, just to make sure what uh, what uh, uh, to know what uh, JSF tries to, to solve this way. So modularity is the degree to which a system's components may be separated and are recombined. In JSF way, it means, uh, it means separation and uh, a combination of views in some way which allows, uh, which allows, to, uh, which allows modularity. And uh, what is multi-tenancy? Uh, it's a principle where a single instance of application uh, can serve multiple client organizations called tenants. It means, uh, for example, I, I have worked for, uh, for some uh, uh, flight ticket uh, provider, and uh, they actually provided a service to other companies that uh, they could use their... Uh, their uh, application to uh, sell tickets, uh, say uh, uh, fl flight tickets, and uh, it's a uh, uh, it's called multi-tenancy, and it's uh, quite uh, quite a good uh, good business around. But the thing is that uh, not much frameworks actually cares about how multi-tenancy should be done. So, for example, in our framework uh, back back there, uh, we allowed uh, the companies which, uh, which uh, used our service to redefine the background and cascading style sheets of the, of the applications. It's not much, right? So JSF builds on top, top of that, on top of that. And uh, they actually uh, brings two, uh, two concepts, uh, faces flows, which, uh, which comes from uh, uh, Spring Webflow or My MyFaces Cody uh, implementations, and uh, they allows you to modularize behavior, as uh, we will see in a, in a few minutes. And second thing which is needed to make this work is uh, modularization of appearance with resource library contracts. That's something I, I haven't seen in, uh, in much frameworks. Obviously, you can you can done that ma manually, but uh, uh, you won't. Uh, it, it 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 won't be any in any uh, 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 in, in any standard way. So let's look at this small demo here. Uh, I have. I started Wildfly, where I have uh, I have um, uploaded uh, one of wow, sorry, yeah. the cable cord is out. Yeah, so let's fix it again. Here. <laughs> So uh, this might be example of flow. Uh, uh, faces flows can be used in a in a way uh, that uh, you have some some home page and then you enter uh, you enter a flow. And now you are in a scope of uh, one one flow. You can uh, you can uh, you can continue with the wizard to the next flow. You can uh, pass some value here. And you can you can uh, go back home, or you can enter another flow. So now the the flow one doesn't that doesn't exist anymore, and you are inside the second flow. So basically, you may see it's something like conversation in uh, in CDI. Uh, but uh, the thing is that uh, conversation isn't. Uh, itself, it isn't as uh, as powerful. Uh, so that's why JSF came with new uh, scope. This scope is uh, called uh, flow scoped. So, for example, here is a bean for uh, for first scope uh, and. 
those beans, uh, those beans life cycle is as as long as the uh, one flow uh, uh, one flow uh, runs. So uh, basically, we are limiting for one particular uh, action, uh, and uh, you need to be aware that, for example, this way, it's very simple to do things like like a checkout card where you have uh, wizards. And for example, you can, in your application, you can open two wizards to buy two things uh, parallelly. Uh, I don't think it's a, it's a very, very convenient way, but uh, back in the days when I was implementing this fly ticket system, uh, we, we noticed that when you open two, uh, when you uh, search for av available, uh, uh, available uh, flights, then uh, you want to open two flights, uh, two new tabs, and uh, there the, the scope of the, of the beans uh, collide uh, and uh, the, uh, the application wasn't, wasn't uh, separated in, in this way. So uh, this, is the, this is the very, uh, very convenient way how to, uh, uh, how to uh, define a scope for one particle action better than, than for example, uh, conversation and nested conversation and, and so on. And there are uh, other concepts around, around it. <coughs> for example, In face config, faces config. Declarative. <laughs> yeah, here is the definition of a flow. So you can either write the definition of a flow uh, like uh, declaratively. Uh, in a in a flow.xml, uh, for example, for flow one, uh, we will define it's it's similar to JSF navigation. Uh, it's a very similar concept, and you, you can you can play with parameters. And there are two ways how to how to declare the flow. Uh, one is uh, one is uh, declarative here in XML, or you can use programmative, uh, the very similar API to to this XML uh, in Java, where you can define. Uh, define uh, flows. So that's one thing. And then let me deploy. Uh, uh, let's show you show you con uh, contracts. Uh, Uh, I will rather show you just just code. Is, is this the application? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let's look uh, how the application look like because it's a. Uh, contracts library. Ah, okay. Uh, let's look at the code. It's, uh, I think it will be pretty, pretty obvious. So uh, here in, uh, here we have uh, resource, uh, uh, sorry, contracts library, and uh, we have two. We have two contracts uh, implement, imp implementation. Uh, one is for uh, blue, with, uh, which is using some uh, some some template, and uh, one is for red. It's a similar uh, as I told you that uh, uh, you can uh, you can actually uh, you can actually uh, um, 
we actually did it for uh, for those companies uh, as a service that we have uh, defined for them uh, different uh, different looks for for the same application. And uh, here is uh, the user of the contract in the in the lib. No, sorry, sorry. This is the contract which we can use in a in an application, and here we define the, the the contract. For example, for blue and red, they can be in another jars. For example, so they can have uh, another uh, another implementations for for uh, each uh, uh, for each company, say. And here we we have template where we change the whole. Uh, the uh, whole uh, view uh, and uh, what what uh, does it contain? So ba basically, you have you have contract, uh, and uh, in in that contract you define the the, the main content, and uh, here here have, here you have the implementation of the contract where you define how how uh, the whole view uh, looks like. Okay, sorry, it was little. Confusing, but let's continue with the with the presentation. Um, okay, so what other smaller features so we have in a uh, in a uh, JSF? Uh, at first, we have uh, view uh, view action. Uh, view action is uh, view action accompanies the view param. Uh, view param lets you pass information through the get, get request to the to the bean, and view action in JSF22 allows you to perform some action. Typically, it's something that you wants to be done before uh, bef uh, when the request uh, starts, when uh, before the view view is is built. Uh, then JSF22 uh, uh, prevents. Uh, uh, more from uh, cross-site request uh, forgery. Uh, the thing is that uh, JSF uh, actually uh, um, every time did uh, prevent. However, uh, now uh, uh, there is specified uh, uh, that uh, how, how the JSF implementation should behave that it uh, actually prevents. So there is something like a referrer and origin headers inspections that uh, makes sure that your that uh, the request comes from uh, the uh, the domain which uh, which is uh, which is allowed, which is protected, and uh, or, or maintained by you, and there is also view token for uh, for uh, uh, securing get get request. Another feature is uh, notion of client window. The client window itself is uh, pretty pretty useless uh, uh, because uh, it. Uh, it, uh, uh, the concept uh, is that uh, you can uh, you can track uh, you have the object in a Java um, Java API which uh, which refers to just uh, one user uh, user window on a client. The thing is that one uh, one view root uh, sorry one uh, view can be rendered uh, just uh, by one client window. Uh, wait. Uh, let's get get around. Uh, cl client window basically uh, is strong binding between the between the current view and uh, with the object. Uh, like it can be window or mobile device or whatever uh, it is. Uh, it is uh, bound to what what currently what the device currently uh, renders uh, the view. The problem with this is that you can uh, if you open what I would like to achieve is uh, that uh, one client window object means that it's exactly the one uh, one window on the on a client. However, you can imagine that you will open this link in the tab and then you you uh, then you click it directly. So you will have two tabs and they have two they have same client window object. This is the problem or. This is a problem with client window, which can be prevented by by uh, disallowing the open context uh, context menu on the client. But it's it's awkward and it need, needs to be solved in a little bit uh, better better way. 
another very cool feature which I always wanted uh, was uh, use of uh, CDI in JSF artifacts. And uh, those, uh, all, th all those artifacts can be used. Uh, uh, basically, anything in JSF can be, uh, can be enhanced. Uh, however, however uh, uh, three things couldn't, uh, didn't make it into specification. And it's uh, CDI in in injection into components, uh, validators, and, and converters. And uh, if you want to, uh, to make that happen right, right now, uh, let's use OmniFaces library. Uh, Next, if you uh, use iteration component, you could every time use those those uh, uh, objects, uh, those types. But now you can uh, use uh, generic collection like sets or whatever. Uh, also, there is new uh, file upload uh, with uh, very nice uh, principle. You, you are basically uh, using or leveraging uh, servlets API. The, the uh, Multi-part requests uh, are parsed into into the parts, which are uploaded files, uh, and uh, you can also validate the files. So uh, you can, for example, validate that the, the uh, maximum length of the file isn't isn't bigger than than uh, expected. There are another improvements, like there are a lot of them. However, uh, for example, from uh, we had uh, every time we had delayed AJAX in our retraces. Uh, but uh, as a queues, but now it's in a vanilla JSF, and or HTTP only cookies. It's a more security, programmatic faces config, and so and so on. Uh, and I believe that I'm out of time. Uh, so if there was someone, uh, I'm sorry for that, but it's, if uh, there was someone who was. Uh, like um, very curious about the future of retraces project let's uh, let's uh, come to me and i can i can show you what we are doing right now uh, in a in a nutshell we we have new architecture for building widgets we are uh, we are working uh, with pure javascript and uh, client side tools to to create widgets like uh, not coupling with jsf internals uh, which means we could reuse those widgets also in, in other frameworks. You can use, for example, they are built on, on top of jQuery UI, so you can use vanilla jQuery UI for using JSF widgets. Uh, there will be very easy migration with, uh, with RichFaces 4.5, uh, because uh, what we have now, RichFaces 4.3, stable, uh, you can use the same, pretty same views, uh, but uh, in the same in the same package as uh, in the same application as Richvasis five. So ba basically, we are using Richvasis five core uh, in uh, Richvasis four dot three, but uh, for compatibility for API compatibility reason, uh, we have uh, we have uh, increased the, the version here. And uh, you include just single jar and a single namespace, which is better than four jars, uh, four jars and and uh, two namespaces before. And we also simplify testing uh, in form of graphene page fragments. So if uh, you are familiar, if you are familiar, yeah, uh, those page fragments is uh, the, the API for uh, creating uh, or en encapsulating the testing model for components. So for, for example, if we have autocomplete, uh, then we could uh, we can use auto -com we could define a page which has autocomplete and then we could simply using Selenium API underneath uh, to uh, to test uh, um, the the components from a high level. The good thing that you don't have to define them because our QA team uh, already defined uh, them uh, in their efforts for testing rich faces itself. So uh, you can just leverage the the API uh, for uh, in in your in your views. So that's it. Uh, I'm sorry, I have run out of time. Uh, do you have some questions, or is there someone who would like to know more or specific uh, Richvasis five features or so? Or so? Okay. Uh, so any questions? Uh, it's a. 
Yeah, the question is uh, which uh, application servers uh, bundles Retraces 5 or uh, ships with Retraces 5. The thing is that Retraces 5 isn't dependent on application server, but rather on uh, JSF specification, and we support uh, JSF 2.0, 2.1, and 2.2. So you can you can use JBoss application server 7, uh, JBoss EAP. Uh, you can use Wildfly. Uh, we have just released uh, yesterday Retraces uh, Alpha 3, which is compatible, fully compatible with uh, uh, JSF 2.2. So uh, you can uh, you can uh, use it uh, nowadays on a, on a bleeding edge, and you can use whatever you want, glassfish, Tommy, anything. Uh, we have some problems with uh, MyFaces, though, uh, some compatibility problems, uh, which we we are addressing right now. Thank you. Thank you. Já, já to musím prenderovat, jo? A... Chviličku. Jo, jo. Jsem, jsem nějak prošvih, ty to či, či, bylo delší dobu, než jsem čekal. No, po první přednáška se mi povedla v pohodě a ta, tady jsem nějak zaspěl. A jo? Za to nedostaneš další balíček. Ty jo. Já jsem snad nějak čekal, proto jsem si ho vyzvedl už jako v tom první. Ale co to je? Tady máš dvě přednášky, jeden mi jeden balíček. Zapojím ti ještě, zapojím ti mikrák a budeme ti říkat, máš 40 minut na všechno, včetně diskusy, čili my po 30 minutách řekneme prostě 10 minut, tak si zváš, kdy začneš ty diskuse třeba většinou je tak, když je tam 5 minut už jenom, tak ti ukážu, že se byly 5 minut a v to chvíli je dobrý začít diskuse, pokud chceš nějaký dělat. Já se představím. Mohl bys to tam prosím nahrát, pokud to máš na tuhle, na tuhle flešku, nahrát nejlépe hned, ať na to nemusíme myslet potom. Čím se nací baterii, nůžka. Thank you. 